You're Jimmer? You're Jimmy? You're Jim Bob. Our names are Jim. Alexander Park. Uh, the old high school is up on the hill here. I wanted to take a moment before the weather gets too bad to do a quick stick review. PGS goaltending. They make goalie pads, goalie sticks, and it's ProGoalies.com. This is a 26 inch paddle. This composite stick is super light. Love the rocker heel. Love the thin blade. This thing has super balance. PGS goalie sticks. You guys got to get one of these. I love these. These are awesome. Tell them Keek sent you. They're made in Michigan. All right, today we're gonna to get on the ice, do some drills where we break down two types of saves you're gonna make. Projectile reaction save and positional reaction save. And it's important for you to understand how that applies to you and your goaltending training because a lot of goalies spend time working on reactionary saves to the projectile, meaning the puck coming in, making that save, versus positional reaction saves where you get a wall, a limb, something built up in front of the puck just before it arrives, where there's no true reaction to the flight of the puck you're reacting to the situation. Now watch this. When you look at the ice, every goalie is going to have a different level of a reaction zone that they can react to a puck. And it's going to be dependent on the velocity of the puck as well. So if an NHLer shoots from right here on most goalies, that's going in. It's going to get to the net in under 200 milliseconds, which is about the absolute reaction time of a, a human being. So you're not reacting to that puck. But you're going to see on the ice, as this distance grows, reaction time exists you're gonna have a much better chance of stopping the puck when you have a, a puck coming from a distance. Now, positional reaction save, a little bit different. This happens 80 to 90% of the shots that come the way of the net in an NHL game. Backdoor pass, guy corks one from right over here. Goalie gets over and he's putting stuff into coverage. He's trying to put a wall up, a reaching butterfly, a projected glove or something. He's not reacting to the puck after it leaves the stick. So let's get out there. We'll show you a couple drills with Ben. I'm going to pick on Ben today, and I feel bad for him. Not real. All right, guys. We're going to get on the ice. We're going to victimize this guy. He's going to play along. Appreciate you helping out. But I want you to try. This isn't like a swaggy P, you know, elevate type of a thing where the goalie's not trying. He's going to try. And Adeline is going to be out here helping with a couple drills. We're going to illustrate today in the drills on the ice, positional reaction saves versus projectile reaction saves. So let's start with Ben. You jump out of the net for a second. Tommy's gonna have the initial puck here, and before you shoot it, Tommy, just listen as we walk through. He's gonna shoot this initial puck, and we've got two option pucks, one on the glove side and one on the blocker side. This first shot is gonna come low, and then he's gonna immediately launch and go hit the secondary puck. Now, the thing that we're gonna understand here is when this puck is ultimately shot from the side, this isn't gonna be a reaction save to the projectile because once the puck leaves the guy's stick from here, you're not reacting, it's coming too fast. It's outside your reactionary zone, but you're reacting to the situation. So, let's try a couple of these. Ready, here we go. Push that glove forward, Ben. Push that glove forward. Go. Three more, three more. Two more. Let's do three more. We'll mix in a save here, Ben. Mix in a save. It's a good warm up drill to start. Hey, they're ready to set her up. And three more. Here we go. Press that glove forward, Ben. Two more. Last one, last one. All right, Tommy, come and hold my thing. Now, one thing that we have to understand is there's a confusion that happens because sometimes goalies will make saves on shots from here 
where it looks like it's a reaction save. If you watch right now, there's no goalie in the net, I'm not shooting a puck. My stick puck relationship of this invisible puck is going to give you a pretty good idea where it's coming. So watching from behind the net camera, you try to tell me where I'm shooting with this one. You can tell based on the follow through where the guy's going, high, low, left, right. And that's going to give you a lot of visual information. But what we're going to do here now with Ben is we're going to move back and forth with these pucks to see if we get to a point where he gets comfortable with his reactions. So let's start on the first one where he has really no chance. We're going to artificially put him deep in the net. And we're going to start with this puck right here. We're going to see if he can react to this puck right here. So now, presumably another four feet back, he's got a little bit additional reaction time. He should be able to re react to the projectile a little bit better now. Now from here, he should theoretically own me. Right, Ben? So this is an example of him playing along and purposely letting me score, but it illustrates a great point. As a goaltender, you're not going to react to the projectile. All the hand-eye, all the sensorine, all that stuff following the puck off the guy's stick isn't going to help you if you get a high-velocity shot from too close of a distance, especially if you're too deep in the net. So understand your training. Spend more time working on your positional control than actually reacting to the puck. Who's going to set the tone, Sanger? Who's going to set it? All right, heading off to a lesson today, just like every other day, either a clinic or a lesson. And I got the Jimmy out, one of my favorite vehicles in my collection I like to drive, especially in the fall. Can't keep it out too much longer with the salt coming on the roads. But this beautiful old car, truck, SUV, the Jimmy, Jim, Jim, Jimmer. Anyways, I call it the Blue Waffle. Those of you that know, no, that's a unique name for a truck. The blue waffle. Anyway, I want to set the tone. I want to set the tone by talking about practice. You talking about practice? Yeah, we're talking about practice. When you're a goaltender that's playing competitive hockey, you have to set the tone when it comes to puck handling. You have to sit down with your defense, go through your communication strategies, talk about what's supposed to happen in a contested and an uncontested dump in, what verbiage you're going to use. Who's going to do what? What's your release valve? All the puck handling elements that you have to have as a goaltender need to be discussed and thoroughly understood by both parties, the defenseman and the goalie. And a lot of times, coaches don't want to be involved with that. So show some leadership. Show some leadership. Set the tone. Sit down with your teammates, your defensemen, and go through what's expected from their point of view and your point of view when it comes to puck handling touches. Set the tone in the puck handling game in practice. Another way you're going to set the tone in practice is your battle, your effort, your compete level. Everybody says that, they pay at lip service, but what does that actually mean? That means even in situations, two on O's, three on O's, the goofy drills coaches do, you don't give up on it, you battle, you don't cheat, you don't lean early on a pass, you stay lined up on the guy till he passes it. No matter how hopeless the chances, you throw something at it. You might make a save like Dominic Hasek with his spine like a slinky. You know, the MasterCard commercial from back in the day. He never quit on practice pucks. And that's one thing. I brought kids to meet Dominic probably 15, 20 years ago when he was playing for the Sabres. He went the whole practice, compete, battle, only gave up one or two goals. It was so rare when they scored, the teams were actually celebrating his own teammates. Is it that rare in your team's practices where when they finally score, it's such a unicorn? I don't think so. Set the tone in practice. Battle, compete. Your teammates will love you. And that's one reason why Marc-Andre Fleury is universally loved by his teammates in his Hall of Fame career, because he doesn't quit on pucks in practice. Battles he competes, he makes his practices, his games. Set the tone. Now, another way to set the tone in practice is to be the first on the ice and the last off. Now, you've heard that advice before. It's age-old advice. It applies to work, life, everything in general. But in practice, it means a lot. And it means a lot because when you get out there earlier, Guys that want to work on skills have somebody to shoot on. You can get yourself properly prepared for when practice actually starts. And in most cases, coaches don't do a proper warm-up for you, so it's a good way to feel the puck 
So it's a safety valve. It lets you get ready. And at the end of practice, coaches notice who stays out late. Don't do it when you feel like it. Don't do it once in a while. Consistently be known as the last guy physically off the ice. Set the tone in practice by being a guy that shows up early and stays late. Those are the guys you end up seeing playing on television. Another way goaltenders can really set the tone in practice is to make sure you're not criticizing or getting into it with your teammates or criticizing your coaches. A lot of time coaches run poor practice, a lot of gap in the drill, guys shooting at your head, teammates shooting at your head. Practice can be a very negative, upsetting thing. And many of us that have played know exactly what I'm talking about. Surviving practice is the biggest thing. So set the tone in practice by not being a chirper, shots off your head, Ask the guy politely away from everybody else to stop it. If the coach is doing poor drills that aren't helping you, set the tone. Talk to him privately and say, you know, coach, maybe we can have a little more gap in the drills so I'm not getting shot, shot, shot. It'll allow me to see the puck off the body, allow me to become a better rebound control goalie. And in practice, you can become better every practice or worse. And unfortunately, a lot of practices are designed to make the goalie worse. So set the tone. Reach out with your coach. Sit down and give him ways in a non-threatening way to say, listen, maybe we have more gap in the drill. Maybe we have more zone setup drills instead of flow drills. But do your best to set the tone by helping the coach manage the goaltenders better in practice. Another way to set the tone in practice, or I'm gonna use this example, a beer league skate for beer leaguers, is get there early. Don't just show up, get on the ice as everybody else is already warmed up waiting to start. Get there early, stretch properly, and the eager beavers that get out there as soon as the ZAM closes have a live goalie to shoot on. That's when you can get some true warm-ups in. And by setting the tone, by being there early, they know you're eager and they'll try harder for you. If you're a guy that just sort of cruises out there, teams are already divided, teams are already shooting at empty nets or posts, and they're waiting for you to get your sweet butt out there, they're not going to back check for you because they don't like it. You want to be liked by your beer league teammates. You want to generate goodwill so they're going to actually try for you. Get your butt out there early. And the other thing, too, set the tone by not being a whiner or complaining. They're not going to play great defense. They never do in beer league, so I don't care that they don't back check. Look at it from a positive frame of mind. Use those cir circumstances to come out and grab loose pucks, hammer it up to the lazy D that doesn't want to come back to help you out. So in beer league, be there early. Don't be a whiner or complainer. Set the tone as a gregarious, great guy. They'll love you. They'll actually try harder for you, and they'll try to win by keeping more pucks than that by helping you. Set the tone of practice, even when you're a beer leaguer, playing pickup on. At the end of the day, practice is what turns you into an elite athlete. It's not the games. Practice. I was a scrambly, all over the place, elbows and rear end goaltender when I played junior hockey. Wasn't able to play in the OHL because I was so scrambly and had no structure. But I learned structure. I learned battle. I learned compete. I learned puck handling touches. I learned not cheating. I saw a massive volume of pucks for two hours every day in practice in college. So understand this, practice is where you set the tone. And it also sets you on a path to have an extended career where you can accomplish things maybe greater than other people that don't approach practice in the same way. Don't try to survive practice. Try to thrive in practice.